Greetings, this is uh, Brian Fields, amateur radio call sign, W9CR. And today I'm working on a 11 inch, four can, 220 megahertz duplexer that just has some amazing performance. Um, I'm actually at about the, the limit of what I can measure in terms of uh, uh, decibels of uh, isolation here on my VNA, very close to it. Um, the only problem with this is it's fairly heavy, so I have it tuned up on 223 or 224.3 and 222.7, so 1.6 meg split, <coughs> which is standard for ham radio. I'm seeing on average about a negative 92, 93 isolation on one side, negative 95 on the other. Um, uh, just under six tenths of a dB insertion loss, right around there, give or take a tenth of a dB. Uh, and that does check out under load as well. I, I calculated out um, uh, right around uh, point, uh, point 0.7 uh, dB a loss uh, under load, which is uh, pretty much perfect because normally uh, you have a little bit more loss uh, in circuit because the, the transmitter doesn't have a perfect match uh, like the, the VNA does to the, um, the duplexer. But, um, uh, you know, I, I worked and got all the cables figured out, um, got everything put together, and uh, it's uh, it's really, really nice. Uh, it's just quite heavy. Um, but this is not the sort of duplexer you would see um, anyone uh, sell. I mean, it, I'm certain you could call Decibel Products and they'd make you one up, uh, or, you know, whoever you want, uh, but they're probably not going to guarantee it. And they may not even touch it because, you know, it's a would be a non-standard part, uh, it'd be akin to just buying the cavities and putting something together. So, um, and you know, on top of it, a four inch uh, cavity duplexer has, you know, about a dB, 1.2, 1.3 dB a loss at this frequency. So most commercial people don't care about it, but uh, you know, hams are hams are hams. So you're looking at one pass right now. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this around so you can see the other side here. Hold on one second. And uh, I had to get out my long test cables here. <clears throat> now you will see, you'd be like, hey, my, my isolation isn't all that good. What's going on? It's actually not that bad. It's completely unterminated on the other side. So I'm going to take this, which is a little... Uh, Terminator and screw it on the um, you're gonna see how that just improved right there um, so you know 90 92 right here 93 DB of isolation um, I get my uh, <clears throat> uh, pen here There's your return loss, that's your input. So it's negative 43 dB return loss. Uh, pass a little bit higher on this one, just under 7 tenths of a dB. Um, but still, that's that's unheard of for commercial, uh, anything commercial. And that's actually very close to what I measured. So if I, I measured 0.7 dB or so of uh, uh, under load uh, based on, uh, was it 43 watts forward? And um, uh, going uh, coming out of the duplexer was uh, Oh, wow. Look at my. Uh, yeah, we had uh, 42 forward and uh, uh, 38 uh, in uh, coming out. So that's the loss, which is really nice. If you're looking to run a ton of power, this isn't going to dissipate that much heat. Uh, you're still going to have some loss in it, but it's not going to be anywhere near that bad. And some of that just might be cabling, things like that. Um, and uh, these are unplated cavities too. So uh, normally with a cavity this size, you don't really have to worry about plating it because your, your resistive losses aren't going to be your, your dominant part. But you know, if you're trying to squeeze every hundredth of a dB out, you're really, really trying. So uh, uh, that's, cavities are what they are. But uh, so this is, a, this is it. Uh, this is a really nice, and uh, what I should do here is let me do, uh, display, uh, data to memory, data memory, okay, now we're going to do data and memory, 
and then data memory, data and memory, and I'm going to swap back so you can see the other side. So that is everything all at once. It's, uh, it's actually pretty cool to look at. I like it. Um, <coughs> there's your two notches. There's your pass. Um, it's very nice and symmetrical. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful duplexer. So, um, and again, this is on the, the low pass side right now. So, I'm going to zoom out here in the next one and uh, uh, show a little bit more on this. Uh, since uh, I'm going to have a number of these available for sale, uh, shipping will be. Uh, expensive. Uh, the good news is I can break them down so they're UPS shippable, but I'll get into that in a minute. Okay, um, so I'll go through this in a second. Let me uh, move over there. Uh, it's a little bit later at night right now, actually. That's how I was able to get the better pictures of the DNA. So um, let me uh, let me turn this around here and I'll show you some of the duplex here. Uh, let's see if I can move this around. Okay, so this is the duplexer here, and uh, no, I'm actually going to just take this out of place here. So this is what we have. See, it's four cavities. And um, we had uh, this uh, large uh, rack that it was bolted down onto, and there's actually supports here, and you can see. This is an aluminum uh, channel. So this would be your receive side input here, and then your output over there, and then this is your transmit side input. And right now it's terminated. Purple cables in the center, and then uh, blue cables here. I believe those are the links there. These are, uh, let's see, purple is 8 inches, and then blue is 8.75 inches tip to tip. Um, RG, um, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, 142 is what's used here. You can use RG400. Anything with the velocity factor of 0.7 or 0.695. Um, and uh, you can see the, um, let me zoom in there. That there, which is the, uh, it zooms in on it. That is your adjustment screw for your uh, capacitor that sets your notch. And what's nice about this one, you can see you can actually swivel the coupling loops in here for best uh, VSWR. Uh, a lot of duplexers now you can't do that on. Oops. So that's the unit. The bad news is each one of these cavities weighs about 45 pounds. I'm gonna mount this back up here. Okay, so this is my first uh, iteration at a coupling loop. And you can see originally, this is one of the original loops. All I did was drill a um, little pointer here, a little hole in it right here. And then uh, sweat in a little Johansson, uh, Johansson capacitor right there. Um, the problem as you can see, this is exactly centered in there, if you see. And our problem with that was we couldn't uh, get enough space in there. And you can see uh, what was done here was it had to be filed out just to get that in there. So by the time you have the, um, I'm going to show you with uh, one of these here, by the time you have the connector on there, so you have this extra 
lip part here and you try getting in there and it's it's a very uh, tight fit uh, you see how my uh, even this driver is cocked out just a little bit so there's just not quite enough room plus it's a machining nightmare and you know you're, you're taking apart the whole thing anyways um, so and that ran into um, our next iteration which was uh, these right here and I had some uh, copper discs I'll show you the discs here <coughs> uh, you see here's one of the original ones and since I had to get some to cover it up I got these and they're slightly just a little bit bigger just very very slight biggerness to them um, you can see as you sit them on there but I got these uh, they're just punched from a copper remnants place on eBay um, they're about a buck fifty a piece something like that um, and then the machine work <laughs> this is where the money really is um, you know what we had them do was do a, an offset uh, specifically the same size as this you see this is punched uh, here it's flat like a D I don't know if you can see this better here um, this side's flat uh, since I'm just sweating it in place we really didn't need that and then uh, this fits one of the we get a spirit pastor here here's one right here um, this is one I actually wicked up some solder in it and um, it sits in there like that. Um, now it doesn't have enough space for the, uh, again this would have threads on it too, it doesn't have enough space for the nut and the cap. Um, but what I'm doing is just simply sweating it all in place. Uh, very very quickly with a uh, hot air wand and a board preheater um, and you see it just it looks perfect. So the only problem is I ran into, these are the first ones I did, and I copied the same way of doing it here. There's a little piece of, uh, this actually sits right there and then goes into this, so it's just removing it. You can actually see this, this capacitor here is broken uh, because it's a, you know, it's a, it's a test one. Um, but this, because it's in the center, fits in the hole properly. What happens now, and uh, I had to flip this so that instead of going, uh, around this way and over. I actually go down this way and over here. So I'm, I'm having to redo these. Uh, so uh, instead of doing a, uh, basically what this is doing, it's you're going down, over, down, like that and back up and then over. And then it connects there and uh, uh, you have this you know flat part connect there. So um, works out pretty well. Um, and uh, I'm using uh, leaded solder for everything. I do clean these up a little bit, put a little bit of silicone oil on them, but again, this is such a large piece of metal at these frequencies, the, the, any surface loss is, is not an issue. I mean, you can see from the performance we're getting, we might only get another um, dB or two, um, or excuse me, uh, uh, you know, hundredth of a dB or something. Um, that's, that's what I meant. Uh, so uh, that's not going to even be a tenth of a dB, it's going to be a hundredth or two hundredth of a dB. Uh, so that's <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that's not even worth worrying about. Um, so that's how they're put together, um, and then uh, used an iterative process to come off with the uh, uh, the coax connectors here, and I was able to reuse a number of these. Uh, they work fine. Um, there you go. There's one um, for for that. So. Uh, that's how these are all put together. Uh, I do have a whole bunch of these if anybody's building duplexers and says, hey, I need exactly one of these or two, three, four of them. Uh, I'll tell you the length we're dealing with here. So these are, the original ones here are a uh, 0.1242 inch uh, circle. And these are uh, 0.1262 of an inch. So. And the top is actually a little bit different than the bottom, um, so that's where the discrepancy comes in. Uh, you can see there's the top, and then I'll measure the bottom part of it here. One, two, five, three. And this entire thing is one, two, four, three. So 
it fits uh, in these, no problem, and uh, we haven't had an issue with it. Uh, at most, you need to you know tap it in a little bit. There's enough play in the the duplexer itself for this to fit in, and it's um, just a hair thicker or so as well than the original one, and it's it's not silver plated. That's probably the biggest thing, but again, that doesn't really matter. That's one, two, uh, three, five, and these are. Uh, one, two, well, one, two, three, five. Okay, so they're the same size. So that's it. Um, the important thing is to keep the tension off this. So this is soldered in first, and then we come back, uh, have a little hole in here, and this kind of just fits in there, and there's no tension on that capacitor because it does not deal with tension very well. Um, what I have found is some of the capacitors need to be exercised a little bit just to get them to go all the way down. Um, you don't want to go too far with them, but you do want to make certain they spin free, freely. <clears throat> I'm just dropping stuff left and right here. Um, so, uh, I've got a few of these and the capacitance really isn't all that critical. These are, um, uh, what are these, um, 0.8 to 10 puff, which works fine uh, for 220 megahertz. Um, VHF, if you're doing a 600 kilohertz split, might need a little bit more than this. You know, 20 puff or something like that, and it'll just be a slightly longer unit. Um, but you know, again, got these off of a uh, guy on eBay. They work fine. Uh, I've also tried some of the other um, uh, components from uh, Eastern Europe. The uh, uh, I forget who makes these, but they're they're available on eBay as well, and they're, as far as I can tell, just as fine and equivalent to the Johansson. So. That is how you make uh, duplexer loops. Um, and oh, again, the problem I was gonna say, we, we ran into um, this, uh, since you're going into a hole like this, you have to go in and it hits right there, going into the hole. Whereas this one, because it's centered, you can go in and it doesn't hit. So uh, that's why we had to move those around. Um, anyways, uh, that's a uh, overview of duplexer loops. I'm going to have a number of these duplexers available for sale. Uh, if you are interested in them, it will be a fully supported product. Uh, I know, something I normally don't do, um, but uh, I think it's something that can benefit people on 220. I have a number of MX800 base stations available as well. Um, and uh, in case you're wondering, it was from an old Passport system and uh, uh, they were all originally bandpass cavities and uh, a little bit of conversion here. Now we have bandpass, band reject, put four of them together and you have more performance than uh, pretty much any other duplexer on the market. So, uh, anyways, with that, I'll talk to you guys later. This is uh, Brian Fields, Amateur Radio Call Sign, W9CR.